That was crazy. So yeah, so what happened is I was actually doing a um, one underground fight. One night we had the guys from England come over, Decca Hagee. Mm -hmm. Did Decca Hagee get killed? I think they murdered him. Really? And yeah, they he murdered him. He fought Oak Tree. Did he fought Mark Oak Tree Brown, but, but he was in, uh, he was coming out of England and he was with these people over there, man, these guys and bad people, man, really bad people. They ended up killing this guy, Decca Hagee, man. This guy was like a, like a rock. Um, he was built, built like a rock from head to toe. But anyway, awesome. I was there that night and there was somebody that was with them or with one of the fighters and you know, I was just kind of controlling the tempo and saying how things are gonna go and he said, you got, you keep talking, you keep talking, you wanna fight? And I'm like, no, 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 and he's like, no, I'll fight you now. So I had to take my shirt off and you know, be be macho man Dave and go in there and I ended up uh, knocking the guy out with a body shot like a minute or so. But he did give me a nice little shiner. He called me with a jab on the way in and I had a shiner for like two weeks. And I was like, dang. But you know what's fun, what's weird about you fighters? Let me tell you what's weird about fighters. Because I'm a fighter, as you know. Um, well, maybe you don't know, so I'll explain my background a little bit. I've been, uh, my dad trained seven world champions. My dad was a professional boxer. My mom was injured in a very bad accident at the age of eight, when I was eight years old. And she wasn't in, really in our lives much more for, for a while, she went back to Oklahoma from where she was from, and at that time, my dad was training a lot of fighters, and he moved in a lot of fighters into my house. Our house actually became a training camp, and before you know it, everybody's coming to our half house for autographs because they're seeing these guys fight on NBC, on ABC. It was crazy. But First so, fight house in America. I, it was crazy. Like it <laughs> was a trend. Listen, reality shows? Oh, reality man. shows don't have shit on this. Like, my life was a reality a walk in reality show my dad was out of his mind it was crazy like everything that happened in my life but we're not going into all that we're going into just i wanted to get you my my fighting back well, real quick so. who were some of the names that lived there at one time we had frank fletcher <laughs> anthony fletcher we had frank the animal fletcher who was um, one of the biggest tv fighters in the 1980s um he just fought everywhere and everybody really knew him anthony fletcher who was actually anthony two guns fletcher was an olympic alternate just an unbelievable dude, man. This guy was unbelievable. Like he really tried to, when my, when my dad wasn't there, be like a father figure to me. And he was an unbelievable guy. And man, he got into a situation where he became a product of this environment. He was hustling drugs and someone pulled a gun on him and he ended up turning around and he shot the guy and he killed the guy and he's on death row right now. Two guys that lived in my house growing up with me during my upbringing are now on death row. It's crazy. Like that's what I say, like when you know, I'm trying to build this business and I've been in a lot of businesses and I think I'm fairly successful at building businesses. I'm probably not the most successful at managing money, but I'm the most successful. <laughs> it's all I, I really take a, uh, I take an idea and I run with it and I probably may try to make it the biggest that I've ever done. Even in this pandemic as we're, we're doing PPE equipment and stuff like that and we want to be the biggest PPE supplier in the world. So we try to do everything we can do to, to, to be the best at what we can do. And, um, you know, I think my upbringing, being around all those kind of people, and like I can deal with that guy. I can deal with the guy that's on death row. I can talk to the CEO of a company. I think I'm kind of pretty well-rounded on there. My upbringing taught me a lot of things that way, and it taught me how to really, more than anything, being punched in my face and knowing what it's like, I think it taught me how to really deal with these fighters, how sure. to understand yeah. where they're coming from, because I get where they're coming from. I get when they're, you know, when a lot of them act like assholes and when they do their thing and they don't know how to talk to you. But I get that some of that, I just let it go off my shoulder. But the others, I just can't. And, you know, we go nose to nose to this day. Like, you know, it is, it's the fighter and me and the fighter and them. And I, I get where they're going from, but I also get there's boxers, fighters, good fighters are the most entitled individuals in the world. They think that they own everything. And some of them are worth a lot and some of them aren't. You know what I mean? There's A side, there's B side, there's, there's prospects, there's, opponents there's a whole different thing with you know with with, with fighting but I, th I i feel like i'm i feel like i can do pretty good at right now picking out um picking out guys that i want to work with you know some guys i don't want to work with but you know what they can fight their asses off and they give the fans what they want so we keep them in there but that's just a little background on on what i've came up to and then i become a um and then i became a professional boxer and there she is telling me what to do again. <laughs> Put the pen down, honey. <laughs> um, I became a professional boxer 
the weird thing about it is, is I've been in boxers in boxing literally since I was born. Two two or three days after I was born, my dad was in the corner of Augie Pantelis in a crowd with helicopters flew on top of the Philadelphia Spectrum, packed wall to wall. Like unbelievable. Year, I, literally year was that? nineteen I can't tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> you almost got me. <laughs> I almost got you. I almost got you. <laughs> but um so you know, I've been in this since I've been in diapers, and um, it's crazy. It's crazy where this where this sport has taken me all around the world, fighting, um, coaching, managing, promoting. You know, I've uh, I went a lot of places I never would have went without fighting in my life. 